we launched a study on April 6th. We have over a million people now who've taken the study. We published a paper about the, the O blood type looks protective against severity and susceptibility to disease. And um, a new paper just came out that is really exciting that was published in Nature that 23andMe contributed to, but we're not lead on, but shows that there are genetics associated with why some people are having such a severe um, you know, case and why they end up in the hospital on, uh, you know, on ventilators. So genetics is definitely gonna play part of the story and that should hopefully help you know, physicians um, better understand how to you know, think about managing and treating people. Are we ever going to be in a place, Anne, where we can take genetic tests to know whether we are susceptible to COVID-19 or, or other types of viruses, and, and particularly mysterious ones, and therefore can figure out how to conduct our lives? There's, there's, there's good data about, and there's, there's a history of actually understanding genetics and viruses. So for instance, in HIV, there is a mutation where people who have this mutation are, you know, highly unlikely or essentially immune to getting HIV. And I think what we'll find in, in COVID at, at some point that there's gonna be some population that is less likely to be having it in a population that's gonna be higher risk. And I think that will hopefully help. Everyone's still gonna have to be, um, you know, be worried about it and be masked up, but potentially you'll have a better sense of actually who needs to be really vigilant about getting to the hospital at the right time and making sure that you're actually getting the right kind of care and treatment if you do get it. So I can imagine a world where this will actually help us better understand why some people, um, you know, are, are going to be, you know, are going to need the, the intensive medical care and making sure that they get it at the right time. Hey, Ann, it's Scott. It's good to see you again. Um, I'm Hi, wondering Scott. what the arrival of the vaccine means for the research that you're doing related to COVID and if, if it in any way means that you, you won't do as much. Well, we have never, we're, we're not doing anything on vaccine research. Like everything that we've focused on has been on genetic research. And I think what we have learned through this is that we have to be prepared for pandemics. And coronavirus, whatever happens, even with the, with the vaccine, you're still going to have to be vigilant with coronavirus. So understanding the genetics of susceptibility and severity is going to be important for us being prepared for any kind of coronavirus B2, um, as well as future pandemics. So that genetic research is still really important, which is where we're focused and we're really enthused to see the vaccine come out and see progress on some of these treatments, but it's not an area where we are specifically playing. I've heard you talk about drug discovery and how you're excited about that opportunity and, and what 23andMe could do. And we covered the story back, I think it was in January of this year before COVID really hit the United States. And, and your industry was suffering from lack of demand and there were layoffs reported at your company. What has the pandemic meant? Just, just both in terms of consumer demand for DNA testing, this holiday season perhaps, and, and just the whole medical side of it as well. I think what we've seen, which is really frankly exciting for us during this time of, of pandemic and people being at home is how much care can actually be delivered at home. And 23andMe plays a key component of that because people are, are interested in themselves and people are wondering about COVID-19 and wondering about susceptibility and wanting to learn more. So we have seen good volume um, this year, but I think it also taps into a bigger story about the opportunities for delivering care at home and that's really where I see, um, you know, a, a game changing moment where um, care can be distributed in a way that is not necessarily dependent upon you seeing a physician and driving and being at a location, but you can actually start to deliver care while you're at home. And just think about the time savings and the efficiencies you get with that. Shepard Smith here. Thanks for watching CNBC on YouTube.